Hello everyone, I call myself Zolnachskind and I like to play Civilization 6 and we are still testing out Abu Simbel, the leader ability of Ramses II of Egypt. We go now into the medieval era and that is where the diplomacy game really starts. But first, a resume of Abu Simbel so far. In the ancient era we got 28.5 culture from it and in the classical era we got 240.75 culture from it. Now, in the medieval era, it's going to ramp up so fast that I can't talk about every single building. Just know that it's mostly city center and holy site buildings we are getting our culture from in this era, as well as wonders, of course. Like I said, the medieval era sees you get to the first diplomatic congress, where you can get diplomatic victory points. We got two congress resolutions there, one about grievances and one about culture bombs. The one with the culture bombs is usually fairly easy to get, the AI doesn't lay into it as much. So I just put a couple votes into it for myself to get some culture bombs going. But for the grievances, it's a little trickier. I reckon that since I was the only one who had met all the other civs, I was likely to be targeted, and I was right in that the AI wanted me to have more grievances. So with that, the first two diplomatic victory points were in the bag. Just after that, we started working on Mahabodhi Temple for points 3 and 4. Meanwhile, we got our first splendid holy site in Nechen and our first splendid theater square in Abydos. The fact that our holy sites weren't amazing was part of the reason I didn't go for work ethic, but still, like I said in the last episode, it was mostly just core music available, click that button. We settled Kurene right in Georgia's face at turn 98 and went into monarchy the next turn. Turn 99 tier 2 government is pretty nice, now monarchy is also the easiest one to do that with, but still I feel like Abu Simbel really helped us get there pretty quickly. And Monarchy is great for diplomacy games. It gives you extra influence points, so you can try to fight for suzerainties more effectively. And it also gives you diplomatic favor if you build up to your Renaissance walls. Thanks to some chopping of woods by some builders, we got to turn 101 building Mahabodhi Temple. Now, Mahabodhi Temple is great in both religion and diplomacy games. It gives you two apostles, which you would want to do to maybe evangelize your religion. And it gives you two diplomatic victory points. In a religion game, it's just basically turning your production into faith. But in a diplomacy game, it's two points you really want to try and finish the game early. We used the apostles we got there to evangelize our religion. We took pagodas as our worship belief. Pagodas are the tier 3 building of a holy site and it gives you an extra diplomatic favor, which again, it's a diplomacy victory, so you want diplomatic favor. And we went for scripture to try and have more passive defense of our religion. Maybe it would have been better to go for religious colonization, but I think I didn't realize at that point how much more I was going to settle. But all in all, that means that we got to our diplomatic victory points 3 and 4 from Mahabodhi Temple, and in the same term we also got gifted a city. Georgia had fallen into a dark age and Gori rebelled to us, so we were one city richer off of doing absolutely nothing. Turn 106, we settled Yunu, a, nor a southeastern harbor city, and we got the Sprawling Empire um, historical moment, which is when you have settled, if I remember correctly, three more cities than the uh, next Civ in line. Of course, thanks to religious settlements, thanks to stealing a settler off of Georgia, and thanks to incorporating a city from them, we really had the ball rolling in terms of settlements. Then, on turn 107, we recruited a new hero, Maui, whom we used to get more resources on places where they might be picked up by Temple of Artemis. We got a tobacco plantation on a place where it gave an extra amenity thanks to Temple of Artemis. But the other uh, resources that Maui got us weren't as exciting. Then on turn 116 we got Kotoko in. I think I started it the turn we got Mahabodhi Temple in the capital of Thebes. 
kind of an offhanded wonder we could build it so I started getting it I really don't like warrior monks as a unit so the four warrior monks you get from Kotoku Inn are kind of worthless in my opinion the 20% faith modifier for the city it's in is nice although Thebes isn't a faith metropolis by any standard but most importantly of course is the culture you get from building wonders in this case Meanwhile, I was able to place my commercial hub in Sais, which was the cue to place the city of Rakadet in the south. The reason I wanted to wait with uh, settling Rakadet is that if I hadn't done that, it would have been impossible to get the commercial hub on the place I wanted it. It would have been in the first ring, so to speak, of Rakadet, and you cannot swap tiles out of a city's first ring into another city's uh, third ring. Meanwhile, however, China, under the leadership of Yongle, had started trying to convert our cities. One city had actually been converted. I asked very nicely to Yongle to not do that, but he declined, so I denounced him. And at turn 119, we declared a holy war against China. Now, two reasons I wanted to do this. First of all, I wanted to pick up the city of Chengdu, which was in a place where I had originally wanted to settle a city of my own. But also, I like to pick up the um, inspiration for nationalism whenever I can, and to do that you have to declare with a cast spell other than a formal war. You have to have a good reason to go to war, so to speak. At turn 120, we got to the Second Congress. Here there was a resolution to get more construction towards uh, buildings in a certain district, 9 out of 10 times at this timing the AI will go for city centers, so I played it a little safe by putting in 3 votes, but that was a really easy pickup, uh, honestly. The other one was about grievances again, and I kind of brute forced this one. I wanted fewer grievances, so I took the other option there than in the last congress, went to get fewer grievances on myself, and put in 7 votes to make sure that went on. Now, that did drain my entire pool of diplomatic favor, but with monarchy in now and uh, renaissance walls on the horizon, I hope that that would not be a problem. And so, we went into the renaissance era with a golden age, just like Scythia and Georgia, while China, Mali and Greece struggled in dark ages. And the renaissance era is going to be an exciting one. In it, we will try to go for a helpful, if not essential, wonder for a diplomacy game. One that is hard to get, in my opinion. Potala Palace. So, will we build it or will we get sniped on it? Come find out in the next episode. I hope you like this one and leave a like. If you want to know when the next episode goes live, then do subscribe and ding the bell. And I will hopefully then see you in the next one. Bye YouTube!